Hi guys, hope you're all doing well uh, and in this video I'm going to talk about EMS commonly known as Enterprise Mobility Plus Security. It's a license SKU offered by Microsoft. So the agenda of this video will be knowing what is Enterprise Mobility and Security, what are the different components offered in this suit and what is the function associated with every service that you opt for if you're going to buy EMS either E3 or E5. So before we understand what exactly EMS is, let's consider a real-time scenario wherein a user, for a particular user in fact, everything starts from identity. That means before user can access any of the enterprise protected resource, what they need is identity. And it is very much obvious we'll be using Azure Active Directory to maintain all the identities, either cloud only identities or hybrid identities, wherein we are syncing user objects or different type of objects from on-prem to Azure Active Directory. Once we have the directory created for the user, the next thing that we have to make sure is what kind of device that particular user is using. This can be a domain joint device, this can be their own device, it can be a mobile device. But what we have to make sure that the security and compliance check is done on that particular device if we are allowing access to protected resource. Now, the offering which Microsoft does is named as Microsoft Intune. It's a MDM and MAM solution, which will help you to define security and compliance policy and configuration policy of the device that a particular user will be using. Once we are focused on the identity as well as device, the next thing that we have to make sure is what kind of data user is trying to create on this device. That means user can be creating files that are of Microsoft platform or that cannot be on Microsoft platform. They can use different platforms as well. And the most important part is email, the information which is getting shared on email. So the fact is that once we have focused on the device security, the next thing that we have to make sure is secured is the data which user is creating while performing their daily tasks. So to control how data is being shared and accessed by different identities, Microsoft has a data protection technology introduced called Azure Information Protection, which will help you to implement data protection by binding identities to all files itself adding authorization and a number of features now since we are focused about identities we know devices and we know how the data is being created but the fact is that the users can use a different platform or a different software that means Users at times use applications which are not approved applications as per your enterprise. That means there is a lot more going on which you as an ID, you're not even aware that user might be using a particular application. So what do I mean by this? That in a scenarios wherein let's say any enterprise has not implemented OneDrive, but they are using Box or Dropbox or even let's say Salesforce third party applications. How will you control the information that belongs to your enterprise is being sent or is being uploaded to different application that to belonging to your enterprise only. You should have a track or you should be aware that, okay, this kind of information is being uploaded to these kind of applications. That means moreover, uncovering the shadow IT, which is running under the hood, which you are not aware. So to effectively control the shadow IT part of your enterprise, Microsoft has an offering called Microsoft Cloud App Security, which will help you for data protection as well as shadow IT discovery. But if we talk about this particular deck, as you can see, everything is more over related to the environment, which is related to cloud. That means your Azure Active Directory, Microsoft Intune, Azure Information Protection, Microsoft Cloud App Security. But what if a particular account is getting compromised on-prem? 
that means a particular user account has been compromised and that compromised identity is moving literally to know what all admin accounts are present and then with the help of brute force attack or trying different combination of passwords let's say a hacker is able to compromise account which has elevated privilege then in no time that particular group of bad users they may end up in a stage called domain dominance but there is one thing which is very common here and that is it doesn't matter which kind of resource you're trying to access in your on-prem environment every request when it comes to authentication and authorization has to go through with domain controller that means the authentication which is happening on-prem all your domain controllers are already aware about that and there is something called user behavior analytics what do i mean by this that if a particular user is supposed to access a particular resource and all of a sudden this user is now trying to resources which are not a part of his or her job role that means it's an anomaly and to keep a track of all this what if i say that all the events that are getting generated on different domain controllers we can pass all that information and we can analyze them with the help of machine learning or AI and I can let you know when a particular user is showing anomaly or when a particular account can be used to do literal moments or when there is a scenario or there is a situation wherein your domain or wherein your enterprise can face a stage called domain dominance now this is something which is completely focused on the logs that are getting generated on-prem and the offerings which Microsoft has are Azure Advanced Threat Analytics and Azure Advanced Threat Protection. So if we go back to our deck wherein we were talking about an account getting compromised on-prem and that's been used to enter a stage called domain dominance, this part of security can be worked by Azure Advanced Threat Analytics or Azure Advanced Threat Protection. So when I say that if we combine all these services offered by Microsoft, which is available in one particular suit, it's actually called enterprise mobility plus security now depending upon the plan that you are choosing it's either ems e3 or ems e5 you will get a different set of services so in my tenant i have activated enterprise mobility and security e5 license so these are all the services which are available by default which you can use and configure to improve the security posture of your enterprise the only difference you will see in this particular list and the components that i have discussed is this option of azure rights management because this is a service which is used under the hood by aip which is azure information protection to protect all the documents now multi-factor authentication is not new we already know that apart from that if you will just try to match all these services which are getting listed in a service plan detail in your tenant compared to what all i have discussed everything will remain same so the agenda of this video was just to let you know guys where you have you should place a particular service what is the purpose of every offering that comes with ems so let's talk about a quick summary of what all we have discussed we have discussed about ems and in the description section i will be sharing a link when you can find the comparison between the service offerings that comes with either e3 or e5 respectively so if you guys have learned something new please feel free to subscribe if you have any feedback query or suggestion please feel free to reach me at learnconceptswork at gmail.com thank you so much